I look so tired. I am so tired. Oh. Welcome, guys, to another week in the life. It's been a while since we've done one of these. It is Sunday. I, if you don't, it's Lindsay. If you don't know, I work two jobs, so my working week starts on a Sunday. I do. Oh, I'm so tired. I slept so terribly. Um. Yeah. First thing we have to do. Take our nets. <sighs> These are my antidepressants. I've been on them for nearly five weeks. They started to help. And now they seem to have plateaued and have stopped helping. But I speak to my doctor on Tuesday, I think. And I'm gonna ask if we can increase the dose because I feel like I need to increase the dose. So now I'm going to have a cup of tea with no milk in it because I ran out of milk and have some breakfast. And breakfast is gonna be one of these chocolate croissants that I made yesterday. Not by hand, I just like put it in the oven and baked it. Because again, I've got no milk and having wee bits with water sounds disgusting. So yeah, eat this, have a cup of tea, and let's go to work. Oh, I'm home, it's four o'clock. Oh, that was a long day, I'm so tired. Oh, I would love nothing more to just sit on this sofa and not move for a good few hours. But I am gross and smelly and sweaty, so I need to shower. My flat is a mess because the previous three days of me just being inside, um, kind of depressed, grief, riddled, hungover days. Um, the place is an absolute mess. I didn't do anything. I didn't even do any washing. <sighs> I need to change my bedding because then we could just, we can just chill for the evening. And then I will be set up for the rest of the week. Let me, let me show you what we're dealing with. So first there's this could all do with being tidied. This isn't the worst it's looked, but this is me being, you know, honest. This is how the kitchen is looking right now. So we need to sort that out. And then we need to sort out the floor drobe that is going on here and actually wash some clothes and change my bedding. So of course, I'm just going to stick on some music and I guess I'll be back with you at some point. <sighs> So I am all clean, flat, it's all clean. Now, it's time for some dinner because I've not actually eaten yet since, yeah, I've not eaten since that um, thing, whatever I had for breakfast. Chocolate croissant and I've got myself a takeaway. Mainly because I didn't take any meat out of the freezer. I can't be bothered to cook and I don't want to mess up my kitchen again. So, we have ice cream for dessert. This is not the ice cream I ordered. I ordered chocolate fudge, but here we have chocolate cookie dough. Never had that before. That should be good. And we have, can I show you this without it spilling? A chicken donna kebab. And it's going to be freaking delicious. So I'm going to sit and eat this and I'm going to watch the rest of... Oh, what's it called? Kevin can fuck himself. I think that's what it's called. It's on um, it's on Prime. It's called Kevin Can. Yeah, f himself. Um, it's got Annie Murphy in it, and she's amazing in it. It's like this weird kind of half American cheesy sitcom, half thriller type thing. It's really good. Highly recommend it. But I've only got two episodes left, so I'm going to sit, eat this, and watch the rest of that. And enjoy my evening. I'm back from work. It is 
20 to 3, so not too bad at the day, to be honest. Still tired though. Again, didn't sleep particularly well last night, but you know, that is life. So, I have something to show you in the bag. <laughs> so, I'm not really into the whole like consumerism of holidays, like Halloween, etc. You know, you have to have specific decorations for each season of the year and all that sort of stuff like it's just it's just overconsumption. i can't afford it either but i did have to go to home bargains today to get dish sponges i couldn't think of the word then and face wipes and i did get myself a new candle as well which is warm apple and cinnamon so that's very cinnamony because you know that does fit with the new season um and i also got this little guy <laughs> look how cute he is <laughs> it's a fake plant obviously um but i just thought that's really cute and it was two pound so i've not spent a ridiculous amount of money on him but i just yeah i thought he was super cute i may customize him slightly because I'd want him to live on my shelf all year round. And I'm thinking maybe get rid of the orange, maybe paint that black and do like gold face on here. And maybe turn, try to turn that gold. I've got some like um, Poshka markers. So I might try to do that to them, make him so he's a little bit more all year round ghosty. But yeah, how cute. I also, Got some Luke's aid as well for me to have at work for the next two days so yeah so now i'm just gonna get changed change my socks because i got absolutely drenched walking to work this morning and i feel i'm gonna get trench foot <laughs> uh, make myself a smoothie and then i have to film and edit my week two of attempting to monetize this youtube channel which isn't going great so far but hopefully the changes that I've made this week will make everything so much better. So yeah, I will catch you when I'm doing something more interesting. Here's my smoothie, by the way. It is mango, pineapple, lime juice, banana, spinach, protein powder, and collagen powder. It's pretty good, but I have a question. So normally, I buy like bags of frozen fruit from, you know, Tesco or Asda, whoever do my shop. They're like £2.50, something like that, per bag. And the bags don't actually last me that long. Is it cheaper for me to buy fresh fruit and freeze it myself than buying bags of pre-cut and frozen fruit? I don't know, I've never really thought about it. But I'm trying to have a smoothie a day. Um, yeah, it doesn't last that long. And I kind of like to do like a shop once every three to four weeks. And yeah, if I'm having smoothies every day, it definitely won't last three to four weeks. Hmm. Might have to look into that. So, my video is just uploading, and now I'm making myself some dinner, and I'm having um, mushrooms, scrambled egg, cheese, in a sandwich, which I know probably sounds a little bit odd, but right now it sounds absolutely delicious to me. So yeah, just frying off my mushrooms, and then I'll scramble my eggs, slice the cheese, toast the bread, done, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And then I'm going to be watching... MasterChef Australia. I've been working my way through it. Um, I don't know how many seasons there are, but I'm currently on season eight, which is a bit ridiculous when there's like 80 episodes in each series. But yeah, that's the rest of my evening. See, doesn't that just look delicious? <laughs> so I did actually end up painting my little ghosty and I think now he looks even cuter, so he's just gonna live up here. How cute. And that is my only 
Halloween decoration. Hi guys, it's editing Lindsay here. I just feel like I should add a trigger warning here. The next bit I am going to be speaking about grief and mental health. So just want to let you know if you don't want to hear about that, then please just skip ahead, skip ahead. Hey guys, it's now Wednesday. It is uh, quarter to three. And that means four days of work done. Only two days left and I'm so tired. Just sat having a cup of tea. And I thought it's about time I gave you guys a proper kind of update about what's been going on mental health wise because when I had those four weeks off of work after my kind of breakdown, you were all so supportive of me and yeah, just wanted to give you guys an update. So where we last left off was I was about to start doing um, CBT. Um, I did do it. I did a 10 week course. Um, it was over teams, it was like a group thing. It was quite good to start with. It was it was helpful to know that there are other people out there who also have the same kind of issues. And it seems that most people are depressed or um, anxious because of work, which is what I was at the time. But unfortunately, about three weeks into it, my best friend died. And it's been the hardest thing. Like, I can't even put into words. So it was actually, it happened round about when I went to Portugal. So on the Sunday before I went, we got a call and were told, um, were told that he was in hospital, in a coma. Um, and then obviously I had to go on holiday. And then the Sunday after I came back from holiday was when he died. So obviously you've seen the Portugal vlog. It all looks great, like I'm having a great time, but it was not the best time because obviously my fear was that he would die while I was there and that I wouldn't be able to say goodbye to him. So when I got back from holiday, I think on the Wednesday, um, we were then told on the Friday that there was nothing more they could do for him and that they were going to turn off the machines. So on the Saturday, a group of us went down basically to say our goodbyes and it was the worst day I have ever had in my life. And I think I will never have a day worse than that. And you know, I've been told, I've heard the words, you have cancer, but you think that's the worst of your life, but no. So yeah, it was horrible because this guy, he wasn't just my oldest friend, one of my best friends, you know, we, we had had a relationship. We'd been together for four years previously from the ages of 16 to 20. Um, and in 2019, we got back together for about six months and, you know, that ended for whatever reasons. But in my heart, in my mind, I always thought that we would end up back together. Like I, I loved him dearly and I always assumed we would be together eventually again. You know, he was the, the Riker to my Troy. <laughs> the, um, the Ross to my Rachel, shall we say. But alas, that's obviously never gonna happen now. And the thought of never actually seeing him again or speaking to him again is horrible, I hate it. So yeah, we went down on the Saturday, said goodbye, and then on the Sunday we got a call that he was gone. And yeah, as you can imagine, all of us, it's like the heart had been ripped out of all of us. And I just spiraled down and down and down. And I basically drank my grief. You know, I've dealt with grief before like both my grandfathers have died but I've never felt anything like this and yeah I, I basically just drank for about six weeks straight pretty much every day while continuing to work 
etc. And then one Sunday, um, so this was in, this all happened in June. And then, what, 23rd of June, I think it was. So yeah, it got to beginning of August and I woke up on a Sunday, you know, hungover, having to go to work, basically had a panic attack about going to work. So called in sick. And then on the Monday, got on to my doctor straight away and yeah, went in to see them and asked to be put on antidepressants. So I have been on 50 milligrams, milligrams? Yeah, 50 mg of sertraline since then. And I feel like it did help quite a bit, but also the fact that I had like Prague to look forward to was really good. And yeah, I felt, I felt good for a bit. And then since kind of coming back from Prague and getting back into work and properly and all that sort of stuff, it's kind of, it's kind of, it kind of like went, it went up a bit and then kind of we've plateaued majorly. So I spoke to my doctor yesterday and we're going to up my dose um, starting tomorrow. The reason why I start tomorrow is because I just had one pill left in my packet for today and I was like, I don't want to just waste one. So yeah, start tomorrow we'll be on 100 mg of sertraline and yeah, we will see if that helps in any way. Like I said, the, it's hard to know what is depression and what is grief at the moment and I don't think I will ever know. I don't. I can't imagine ever feeling okay again, which is not the best thing. Because yeah, I, I miss him every single day. And I've got like photos around on my fridge and that, that picture, that was his, <coughs> that was in his living room. Um, it is of the USS Enterprise because we are both Trekkies and yeah, we spent many an evening chilling, watching Star Trek, drinking wine, and it was fantastic. And now I'll never get to do that again. But yeah, I thought I would give you a little bit of an update. We're trying to remain positive, like as a group of friends, which does include his sister as well. You know, we're there for each other. I've never had so many hugs before in my life, but now every time, like when we go to the pub or whatever and we leave, everyone gets a hug now. So yeah, that's that's nice. We are all sticking together because he was the one that brought us all together. It's like me and my friend Matt went to school with him. Um, obviously we knew his sister then. Yeah, I met him when I was 13 in tech class. And yeah, we figured, I think we went out then, and then yeah, we went out when we were 16 to the age of 20. Didn't end well, but for whatever reason, but you know, he's, he's always been there. You know, I, I moved around a lot as a kid. I moved to Shrewsbury when I was 10, I think. We moved in the April of... 1999 I think so yeah like 9 10 so I've never had like friends from childhood from like when you're really young throughout your whole life but yeah he was he was my oldest friend I'm just waffling now sorry but yeah so now you know what's kind of been going on and I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of this evening. I'm going to make myself some dinner in a bit. Maybe I'll show you that. But yeah, we're just trying to, we're just trying to be a bit more positive. He would hate the fact that everyone's really sad. Over him. He wouldn't understand it because he never did. He never understood why anyone liked him. <sighs> going to finish my cup of tea. In my, in my, I don't give a huffle fuck mug even though I do. <laughs> so for dinner, I have made some couscous. I've roasted off a load of veg, which I'm going to put 
in the couscous, and this is, you know, meal prep for lunches and stuff tomorrow. And then I've got some kebabs to go with it, and then some crispy onions and some pumpkin seeds to go on top. So here we are, this is my dinner. And I'm going to enjoy my dinner and watch some Acre Homestead, which is literally my favourite YouTube channel. I'm obsessed. I want to be like Becky. I want to do the gardening and the pro cooking projects and the preserving, but I live in a tiny one bedroom flat and do not have the space and do not have a garden either. So I will just live vicariously through her for now. Don't judge my tea making skills. <laughs> so it's Saturday um, now. Didn't film anything the past few days just because of working from home. I just sit at my desk and I've done nothing in the evenings. Um, and oh, it'll be the first Saturday in a very long time that I've woken up without a hangover because I had a massive headache yesterday, possibly from well, medication. I'm not really sure. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a cup of tea. We're gonna tidy the flat a bit, put away those dry clothes. Um, we need to pop into town later to pick up a prescription. I think the plan is because it is Shrewsbury Pride this weekend. I think our plan is to meet up and go watch the parade, and then hang out with my friends. I'm not really sure. They all went out last night. Um, so that they're all a bit hug over this morning, and I'm not, which is yeah, which is a, a, a first, shall we say? And um, we went to Shrewsbury Pride last year, which was the first ever Shrewsbury Pride, and um, one of my friends is, is a lesbian, and her parents were there as well, and there was a furry, and we had to explain to her dad what a furry is, <laughs> so that was interesting. But yeah, I think that's the plan for the day. I am clean, my flat is clean, yay. And look, the sun is shining. Um, it's about 10 to 11. Um, my friends aren't coming to the Pride Parade because they are hungover, <laughs> which is fine, but I need to go get a prescription anyway, so I'm going to head into town in, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour or so, and we might see it. Uh, the urge, because yesterday was payday, the urge to go spend lots of money in shops. It's very strong right now, and I really shouldn't, because I'm meant to be trying to save money again, because I spent it all this summer. I've drank most of it away, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to chill for a bit. Might get myself something nice for lunch in town. Let my hair dry a bit as well. But yeah, the sun's shining, so we should go outside. Alright, let's go to town. Normally, I would have headphones as well, but I'm going to attempt to raw dog it and not wear headphones. shouldn't be uh, scared about going out without headphones, but you know, they make me feel comfortable. It's too busy looking in a charity shop, I've missed the parade. <laughs> Okay, so the urge to spend lots of money. I did not fight it. I went and had a little look around the charity shops. Let me show you what I've got. 
So I've been wanting a new Christmas jumper because I've been wearing the same Christmas jumper for years. And I found this. Merry Christmas, you filthy muggle. <laughs> it was three quid. And I literally, I saw it as soon as I went into the shop. I was like, I need that, I need that. It doesn't feel like it's going to be too itchy either. It might be. But yeah, that will need to be washed. And then I went into another charity shop and I wanted to get this book because it's been on my Amazon wish list for ages and you know, a pound can't go wrong. Then, so I wanted to, I'm a big Harry Potter fan, obviously, ignoring the fact that JK Rowling is a turf, we ignore that. Um, but I used to have all the books, but then when I went to Australia, I sold everything <laughs> and only kept a limited amount of books. So I've been wanting to restart my collection. And if I can do it from charity shops, it's amazing. So yeah, we got those. Unfortunately, these came to £1.50 and I didn't have any change on me. So I needed to get it up to £3. I mean, I could have just gone to a cash machine and come back, but um, yeah, I got five bucks for three pounds. <laughs> so we got, I love, I love a thriller love a thriller they're really easy to read and i really enjoy them so we got the guest house which i've never heard of we've got um the boy from the woods which is a harlan coben and i do love harlan coben books so we got that and then we got the mother as well so yeah they will be they'll be good to add to my reading pile trying to get back into reading it's very difficult my brain doesn't quite like me to do it sometimes um then I got my prescription, obviously, that's the reason why I went to town. And then I went to the Asian supermarket. And you know, <laughs> you just know, I had to get more crispy chilli oil because I've not actually had this in my house for three months. I was eating it all the fucking time. And I didn't want to, because obviously my undiagnosed ADHD you hyperfixate on things and you hyperfixate on food and this is what I was hyperfixating on and I didn't want to get to the point where I didn't like it anymore so I stopped eating it but now we've got it back and then keep seeing this all over TikTok carbonara ramen like hot and spicy sounds interesting so yeah I thought I would give that a go and then we have Oh my God, what's his name? What's his name? What's his book? Fen, Fen, Fenkin, Fen, Fenny? Oh, oh, I can't remember. But we've got this, and then we got uh, Charmander as well. And Charmander is lychee flavor. Oh, they're both lychee flavor. Okay, that's fine. But with those, so every time I get one of those, I make sure to clean it out really, really well. And then I put them on my shelf because you know, they're Pokemon and I have to catch them all. And I did see a girl on TikTok like sand the top so you can get that off and then you can use it as like a little pot and I would love to have like herbs in them or something like that. I don't have any sandpaper but maybe I'll do that one day once I've, once I've yeah, collected them all. Yes, I was right, it is Fennekin. So I'm going to stick these in the fridge, get nice and cool. I did also want to get a sandwich from Brown and Francis, but the queue was massive. And when I say massive, it was like out the door and along the street. So um, I've just ordered it on Just Eat instead. And then no more spending money, I swear. No more spending money. But, I mean, I spent £3 on the books, £3 on the jumper. And I think the drinks in the Asian supermarket like, probably came to about £8. So that's not bad. And that is... Oh, what's the word? It's helped quell my need to spend money. So yeah, I'm just waiting for my food to arrive. I will show you it when it gets here. Oh, and then I spent 15 quid on, no, 11 quid on the food. I've spent some money today, but there's gonna be no more, I swear. Let's give Charmander a try, shall we? Not sure I've ever eaten a lychee. Or drink one. Mmm. I think that's really good. I can have it. Obviously, I see this one. Mmm. And my 
shampoo too as well. I right, just touch that from Crown and Francis. Loaded oink. Look how good that looks. Mm. I think I got the wrong one. But this is a breakfast one, so hash brown, um, egg, cheese, bacon. I did get the wrong one. I wanted the one with pastrami and barbecue sauce. But never mind. My name's And then Millionaire's shortbread as well. Perfect. They're delicious. So I'm just going to put some sriracha on my breakfast thing um, sit down and enjoy this it is now the evening i have spent the afternoon actually just editing this vlog now i'm making myself some dinner and you just know i'm having fried eggs on toast with that bad boy there then i'm just gonna find something to watch on tv and chill for the rest of the evening so i'm gonna end the vlog here guys if you've made it this far, as always, thank you very much. I'm entirely grateful that you've decided to take time out of your day to spend it with me. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do consider subscribing. Catch you later.